Hey guys, Chris McGraw here for Autoblog. A couple of months ago, I drove the brand new Volkswagen California camper van in California. Today, we are a few hours north of Seattle, Washington with consumer editor Jeremy Korzanuski and his 1975 Volkswagen camper van. We're gonna take a quick tour and Jeremy's gonna tell us all about it. So like you said, it's a 1975 camper van. This particular model, made in Germany, shipped over to the United States, and it was modified by Spirit Campers in Paramount, California. The company no longer exists, but the van still does, so that's all that matters. A lot of the Volkswagen vans that were converted to campers that you see uh, driving on the roads are what they call pop tops. That means they've got like a canvas uh, tent opening at the top that uh, provides additional sleeping. This one is a high top, and uh, I was actually looking for that because I'm a little over six feet tall, and I can actually stand up without ducking in this vehicle, and that was kind of important to me when I was shopping for a camper. This vehicle carries a couple gallons of water on board. There's a sink inside we can take a look at in just a moment, but this is the uh, filler. Drains right out the bottom from the uh, sink, which is uh, just inside here. And down here, you will see this is the 110 volt power hookup. This blue color is striking, is this original? Yeah, this is the original color of the vehicle. The uh, bottom half is this light blue color, which they carried on to the fiberglass top. It's got this white stripe. The previous owner called the vehicle blue, and we felt like that was grandfathered in. We didn't want to change the name, so we always just refer to this van as blue. Of course, we're at the back now. Like any vintage air-cooled Volkswagen, the engines are on back. You pop this cover and you've got 1.8 liter four-cylinder. You can see the uh, fan runs directly off the crankshaft, goes into this duct where it covers the cylinders. Of course, being air-cooled, it doesn't have a traditional radiator, so it doesn't have a real good heating system, but it does have this little fan blower up here. It blows air across the exhaust manifolds and into the cabin of the vehicle for heat. This vehicle has a few modifications to it. It was originally a mechanical fuel pump. It's been replaced with a electric fuel pump, which is mounted on a bracket over in the corner. It's got a aftermarket carburetor and an aftermarket exhaust for just a little bit more power. Factory rated this vehicle, I believe it's something like 68 horsepower. That very well could have been a stretch even then. I've clocked it at about 22 miles per gallon, uh, which doesn't seem all that great, but I feel like that's a win because if I were pulling a trailer with a pickup truck, I wouldn't get any, anything near that. And considering it's a completely self-contained camper sol uh, solution for four people, I figure 22 miles per gallon is not that bad. And what about top speed? It really depends on the incline. If you're pointed downhill, you can pass 70 miles an hour. Right on flat level ground, I think about 68 miles an hour, foot to the floor is, that's about where you're going to be comfortable at. But the slightest little incline immediately you see the speedometer start, start slowing down. I've never hit an incline that has dropped me lower than third gear maxed out at about 40 miles per hour. All right, so let's talk about arguably the most exciting part about the camper van, the interior. When uh, Volkswagen uh, sent this vehicle over to the United States, it would have been uh, in a cargo configuration with no seating or anything. So Spirit Campers uh, added a refrigerator, a stovetop, a sink, and the Z-bed. So the uh, uh, seat back folds flat. This uh, package shelf flips over to the top and makes a bed that's just over six feet tall. There's a additional bed uh, up at the top. There's a three-piece wooden uh, panel system. It folds out and makes an additional bed for two more occupants. As long as they are not claustrophobic, they're pretty comfortable up there. So how much of this is original to the 1975 transformation of a normal Volkswagen van into a camper van? Quite a bit of it. I actually replaced this faucet, but I did it with an original piece. As you can see, it works. The refrigerator is original. The stovetop is original. All this uh, cabinetry is original. Some pieces, though, had to be replaced. There was an original shag carpeting in here. Uh, that got ripped out, um, just absolutely covered in, in mouse droppings and uh, nesting from all kinds of animals over the years. Uh, so that got ripped out. All this upholstery is brand new. 
Uh, my wife actually did a great job reupholstering all of this. The foam's all new, the fabric is all new, and uh, we tried to keep the vintage feel to the best of our ability. Uh, so we chose fabrics that kind of had that 70s look to them. The package shelf has got this fabric on it. There's a set of curtains that my wife made to give us privacy at night. Of course, this being uh, an air-cooled Volkswagen with the engine in the back, that means tons of linkages. So this is definitely not the kind of vehicle that you would buy for the joy of driving. But it gets you from campsite to campsite, and that's the important part. Steering, as you can see, a loose definition of straight ahead. A clutch pedal, brake pedal, gas pedal. That one is usually pushed all the way to the floor at all times just to keep up with traffic. The shifter, a uh, four-speed manual. And as you can see, it has the world's longest shift lever. You can also see why they uh, refer to these things as the Volkswagen bus. You've got a very bus-like driving position. The steering wheel is like directly in your lap. The other nice thing about this vehicle is that everything works. Everything from the, the lights, the turn signals, parking brake, uh, the heater controls, all of it works. Even the radio works. I figure any time that you can get a vehicle this old and everything functions as it should, that is a victory. How much use does this thing get and what do you got planned for it? Uh, actually, we, one of the reasons we bought this vehicle and we didn't want a show car is because we planned on using it a lot. In October of 2017, we actually put uh, over a thousand miles on this car going from Seattle to Mount Hood in Oregon, Crater Lake, all the way back up over the uh, Olympics. And we have plans to keep using it next weekend We'll probably be the last people to show up for our, our campsite, but we'll show up in style.